Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. This is Spurverts part two. You've still got me, Emma, and the equally lovely Craig Minch. Hi, -o. Looking good? I'm here. <laughs> Um, so, first thing we want to talk about, we've also got Fiorentina coming up on Thursday. The news today coming out of the Evening Standard is that Moussa Dembele is out of that game through mm. injury. What do you make of that, Craig? I'm worried. I'm worried. I mean, Dembele for me, I feel so much more positive and confident when that man is on the field. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think we would have lost the game against Palace if he had stayed on the field. We gambled, took him off. Ben Taleb was in no man's land in the middle of the park. <laughs> they were sitting back trying to counter on us and I just felt like there was a big gap in the middle of the park where Dembele kind of shores it up, ball carries it forward. Well, I was about to say, driving forward is yeah. such a big strength of his now. It's weird to think of him as being injured though because he's like this man mountain on the field. Like yeah. nobody can touch him. People just ping off him and he just, so no one well. can take the ball off him. It, I don't like the idea of him like, you know, being kind of sat down and not able to move yeah. around very much. But, but the thing is, with Dembele as well, he's always been this player that picks up knocks and injuries throughout the season. Yeah. He's never been a player that kind of always stay fit for a whole season. So I'm not really surprised. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think it, it, it's a massive blow. He's important for us. I mean, I think, would you rather, though, have him out for Thursday or out for the Swansea game on Sunday? I think the Fiorentina game is much harder than the Swansea game. So you think I think be Swansea are in, are in disarray at the moment. They're in problems. Obviously, they've <laughs> Which sacked. is a perfect time for them to play. <laughs> yeah, but they've sacked Monk and they've come in. Nothing's really going well at their club. I think we should be comfortably beating Swansea, no matter what team mm. we, we field. Whereas Fiorentina is going to be tricky. Them European teams, for some reason, are always tricky to kind of beat. So I think we, we would have did better with him there against yeah. Fiorentina. I think we could have not played him against Swansea, even though we want to because it's the Premier League and we want to... I mm. think with, even without Dembele in the Premier League, we'd win against Swansea. But with Fiorentina, you just don't it know. gives us a bit more, yeah. OK. Well, you know, hopefully that means he'll be rested for Swansea. Hopefully he'll be back in time. It could all work out positively. Hopefully, yeah. You never know. Speaking of something that might not be quite so positive, though, mm. we did mention in part one of Spur Vets about Deli Alley and his naughty streak. Well, yes. this does have consequences because they do. we had a little table come out today of players who were on lots of yellow cards in the Premier League. Now, if you guys didn't know, if you get to 10 yellow cards in the Prem before the second Sunday of April, you get an automatic two match suspension. And our boys, Deli Alley and Eric Dyer, are both on eight. And they've got another, oh, what are we looking at? Five, six league games to get through without getting booked again or they'll get a too much suspension. I mean, it's, it's worrying. Ugh. I mean, for I Deli Ali... I really worrying. <laughs> for Deli Ali, I think it's worrying because he's not a defensive midfielder. So the fact that he's got that amount of yellow cards is coming down to silliness. Yeah. Whereas Eric Dyer is always going to be in a position where he has to make those challenges. He's there to break up the play. Yeah. He's there to act like a, a, a third centre-half in... in some respects. And he has to take one for the team sometimes. If they catch us on the break, I've seen him do it. You've got to drag someone to the floor and take one for the team. So there's no surprise he's on those yellow cards. Mm -hmm. Ali, though, it's worrying. I mean, I don't know if... I don't. I think Ali can get through it. Yeah. I think he can. Yeah. I mean, here's a question but for you. But will it affect his game? Here's a question for you. Here's yeah. a question for everybody out there. Who would be a bigger miss? Deli Ali, Eric Dyer, for two game suspension? Eric Dyer. Yeah. Eric Dyer, yeah, he would. Even with Deli Ali's magic and yeah, he his would. ability to create? He would, because we've got other attacking players that should be able to come in and do a job. We, sh we shouldn't have to rely on Deli. Don't get me wrong, he's an amazing talent. He's still very young, but you've got Lamella, Son, Ericsson, Chad, Kane. There's so many goal scorers there that should be able to uh, provide that attacking threat that if Ali isn't there for two games, they should get the job done. Whereas Dyer is, I can't trust Ben Taleb, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't trust him with that defensive midfield role but at this point in time. But you could put Mason in there. Mason can't do yeah. what Eric Dyer's doing because you've got to remember when our when our fullbacks push up, Dyer drops back and yeah. we basically have three centre halves protecting. Yeah. And he knows that role and he knows what to do. And Dyer has become he's so understated his 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 role this season. I love him. People are not giving him the credit. And They're if not. he doesn't I mean he has to be in contention in, in Roy Hodgson's mind. I think he will. In some be. respects, he I has to be, be after the season he's had. So for me, it will be a blow. I'm looking at the spine. I think me and Barnaby spoke about it. If Lloris isn't there, Toby isn't there, Dyer isn't there, you're going up the spine, mm -hmm. maybe to Harry Kane, because that hole isn't solidified. It could yeah. be Ericsson, it could be Ali. So Harry Kane, Dyer, um, Lloris and Alvaro. If one of those are gone, you're a bit... Yeah. Whereas anything else around it is just filling in. So, I, I don't know, I, I'd say Dyer's more of a blur. So basically we're saying, Eric, you can't get booked now. Not for at least another month. You heard it here first. Please watch this. That's what ready. Because he might have to take one for the team if there's a counter. Well, that's fine. You can us. take one more, just not two more. Okay. Okay. So you can take one like in the derby. Take one, one more in the bit North of cheese derby, and, that's and that's it, it. mate. Okay. No cheese after that. <laughs> no cheese. We call it cheese right here. <laughs> 
<laughs> and finally, yeah. interestingly, for Spurvert's part two, interesting report in the Evening Standard today. Apparently, Mauricio Pochettino, well, might not have ended up being our manager. It could have been the main man at Barca, Luis Enrique. Can you believe this? It okay. was uh, it was reported that after uh, Andre Villas-Boas was sacked, yeah. uh, Franco Baldini, everybody's favourite director of football, uh, suggested that Luis Enrique, at that point not actually tested as a manager, would have been a good fit for Spurs. What do you think? He may have been a good fit for Spurs. <laughs> you know, we never know, because at this point he wasn't really a coach, was he? So, no. And he hadn't had really any experience. So, But I can't poch. I mean, you can't really... It's all retrospect now. I mean, poch is the man. He's the man for us. He is the man. He is the man. Like, the man. Uh, what is Luis Enrique? I mean, what, what, is, what is his tactics? With Barcelona, I don't think anyone knows. You get can easily say he just tells them to go out there and play. Four, well, three, basically, three. he just says get the ball to Suarez, Neymar, or this little guy called Messi, and yeah. I mean, if he came, <laughs> would we have a philosophy that we have now? We've got this kind of high pressing, high energetic philosophy, playing young kids. That's what we've got on the poch. If he came in, would he have put a philosophy there for us? I think it's so important that we have a philosophy that we can carry for years and years and build with. Because as much as I hate to say it. Wenger had that at yeah. Arsenal and it, and it transcended generations yeah. and we kind of need that. So I don't know if Enrique has one. I haven't really seen that. But from what I've seen of Barcelona, their philosophy is just attack, attack, attack. 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 It's not that good. holding possession, <laughs> ticky type good. of football anymore. Attack, attack, attack can be good. But, yeah, uh, but it's, would it work in the Prem? And would it work if you're in the Europa? I mean, the whole reason we need this high energetic thing is because we're playing on Thursday, then we've got to play on Sunday. So it, it just suited us perfectly. But... We're going to be in the Champions League next season, so I mean, how's that going to work in our favour? It could work even more if they're if they're very fit and energetic. Oh, who knows? Longer Hopefully breaks, fingers, Wednesday, Tuesday to Sundays. Fingers crossed, we get to figure that out and we will. experience we that will. next season. Well, this has we been Spurverts Part Two. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred On TV. Hello, I'm Rhys James. Welcome back to Spurred On. Now, Sunday is a huge game. We've got Man City away. We beat him earlier in the season.